Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to our third part in our five part series on macroeconomic consumption. In this video, we're going to talk about incorporating interest rate into our model and consumption with risky assets. Let's go. So when incorporating a rate of return from savings, this modifies our consumer's lifetime budget constraint to be such that uh, our lifetime consumption is now discounted by this one plus R. And that must be less than equal to our initial endowment plus our lifetime discounted utility flows, right? Where our discount factor is one over one plus R raised to the power of T. Um, when analyzing such a case, it simplifies our analysis to assume that our instantaneous utility function is a uh, constant relatively risk averse, right? Um, this is a utility function that, you know, we've seen in our Ramsey Cass Koopman's model and, you know, Theta in this context is our coefficient of relative risk aversion. So just refreshing your memory. So also we should know that in addition to our uh, rate of return on the market, there exists a subjective discount factor of rho. So there's, you know, what the consumer could be earning on the market with his income. And there's also, you know, the consumer's direct time preferences that they go and they have. So this modifies our lifetime utility function to be the following below. So let's consider a baseline case where our individual is certain about his income flows and their certainty with regards to this rate of return on the market. To derive a practical result from such a model, we want to derive our Euler equation, which is analogous to our consumption growth rate equation. To do this, we consider the case where our consumer reduces consumption in some arbitrary period, T, to consume more in period T plus one. Um, practically speaking, we're just equating marginal utilities across periods. So we're going to set the marginal utility from consumption in period T is equal to the marginal utility in consumption from consumption in period T plus one times this rate of return. So again, we, we just are deriving this from our utility function directly, saying them equal to each other. By rearranging this equation, we obtain our Euler equation, which is CT plus one all over CT is equal to one plus R all over one plus rho is raised to the power of one over theta. So we end up having this ratio, right? This augmented ratio between the rate of return on the market and subjective discount rate, which determines this consumption evolution equation over time. So what can happen when our interest rate goes increases, right? From these pictures that I have here, I want to go and say that it does not always imply that there's going to be an increase in savings, right? It's not something that always happens, right? Because this depends on the choice structure of our individual, which guides the scale of substitution and income effects of such a policy change. So for our first case, right, in number one here, we're dealing with an individual that is consuming at his endowment of Y1 and Y2. From such a change in savings, uh, what's it savings are going to go and increase the interest rate. However, uh, for case number two, where our consumer is already initially saving, meaning that in his for in the period where he got his endowment, he already changed uh, where he wants to be consuming at. So he's already initially saving. So an increase in uh, interest rate now that's going to go and increase his consumption in period two, but in terms of the changes in in uh, savings, it's ambiguous. But overall, the welfare change is positive. For the initially borrowing consumer, right, the increase in interest rate is actually going to make him worse off, right? So even though he is going to save more by construction, he is actually made worse off in such a case. So since the stock of wealth in the economy though is positive, in general consumers are average savers than borrowers. So this is just a empiric fact for this last point here. So let's now consider the case where our consumer saves. He saves by investing in risky assets which return is uncertain. So this makes our optimality condition become that the marginal utility from consumption in period T is equal to one over one plus rho, right? That's our subjective discount factor times our expectation based on all the information in time T of one plus RT plus one raised to the power of I. So that's uh, 
the rate of return on asset I in period T plus one, the expected rate of return, times the expected marginal utility from consumption in period T plus one. So by the properties of expectations, we can rewrite this condition as the following, where our marginal utility from consumption in period T is equal to one plus rho times the expectation of the rate of return on asset I times the expectation of the marginal utility in period T plus one, the consumption from that, plus the covariance between these two points. Um, if our instantaneous utility function is quadratic, so now uh, this is a little bit of a different case, we're changing what our, what our utility function is. This goes and implies certainty equivalence behavior as talked about in the previous uh, video. With the marginal utility of consumption being one plus AC, this gives us now, instead of plus the covariance, right, we're gonna have minus A times the covariance between the rate of return, one plus the rate of return on this risky asset in period T plus one and the marginal utility from consumption in period T plus one. Since the variance of our assets or returns do not show up in these results, we can say that our individual does not care about how risky an asset is. Rather, he only cares about the expected return. This decision to hold more of any assets, though, it depends only on how this rate of return relates to future consumption. So really, the main statement that we're saying here is that consumers do not care about how risky an asset is. They just care about what will be the expected return, meaning the average return from such a result. So let's now relate the utilities from consumption to the determination of the expected return on an asset. So below, we just have a rearranging of our result when we were considering a quadratic utility function, which implies certainty equivalence behavior. Um, this equation states that the higher the covariance of the return on a future asset with future consumption, the higher the expected return will be. For the case of a risk-free asset, um, is, which is you know certain about the return on it, the covariance from such a result is going to be zero. So what we end up getting here is that we end up having one plus RT plus one bar. So that's our you know certain rate of return is equal to one plus rho times our marginal utility from consumption in period T all over our expected marginal utility from consumption in period T plus one. And if we were going to subtract uh, this equation here, right, from the one above, we go and get the following. This is equivalent to the calculation for the beta from our cap M model. Thus, what we've done here is relate a theoretical model of consumption to a practical one that is used in financial markets. So this model is theoretically sound. So I hope this video helped. I'll see you in the next one.